Okay, welcome to chapter five. Chapter five is all about writing methods. And so the, the concept is not difficult. You could have 10 gazillion steps in an application. And so everything is inside the main, and that'd be one way to write. Otherwise, you could take out little chunks and pull them out separately. So just having a single main method, you'd have the main method plus method number one, method number two, method number three. And the idea of pulling things, breaking large things into chunks and working on them separately is called encapsulization. And the idea and the little catchphrase that I use is divide and conquer. What that basically means is that um, if I can break these guys up into smaller chunks, then I don't have to worry about all the rest of the stuff. I can basically focus on just what it is I'm working on. And so it just makes it a little easier to program. <clears throat> okay. So. Uh, we've been doing this a lot. I mean, we've been using things like, you know, the print and print LN. I mean, those are methods, right? We've been using methods since day one. So what's different? Well, in this chapter, we're going to create our own methods. Ooh, instead of just using somebody else's, we're going to make our own. Cool. Okay, there's two terms that come up that, quite frankly, don't really mean that much. However, uh, these are terms that are uh, great interview questions. You know, one of those questions that people, you know, when they try to grill you on your knowledge, they're going to ask you the difference between a parameter and an argument. First of all, argument means nothing to me. I have those with my wife all the time. No. So a parameter is a list of variables that are in a method header. We'll, we'll show you what a method header is in just a second. <clears throat> an argument is a list of variables that are used when you call the method. So quite frankly, I'm never going to ask you what's the difference between the two terms because that's dumb, but it might be handy to learn this so you can ace those interview type questions. <laughs> okay, so on page 270, they talk about the void versus value returning methods. So they talk about the parts of a method header. So for reasons that I'm not ready to explain yet, all of our method modifiers are going to be public and static. I mean, trust me, we will get to the point where we have to explain that. But for right now, everything is going to be public and static. And then a return type, because all methods have a return type, even if they don't have a return type. What did he just say? Yeah, all methods have a return type. But if it doesn't return anything, you put the word void in there to indicate that it doesn't actually return anything. I know, strange, strange. And then the method name, and then a set of parentheses. Now, if this thing accepts arguments, well, then you'd have a list of arguments and they're separated by commas. But even if it has no arguments at all, you still need the, the parentheses. In fact, what what when we talk about this, we talk about bowlegs, because, you know, we, we go out there and say display message, and then we have, you know, the little opening and closing thing it makes it look like a bow leg. <clears throat> okay, that kind of makes sense. So, let's talk about the rules. Ooh, have you perked up when I said the word rules? You should. Okay, so all methods must have a return type, even if it's just void. Uh, must have parentheses, even if it doesn't take any, any parameters. <laughs> if it has parameters, they mo both have, must have both a variable name and a data type, just as if you were declaring the variables, data type first and then the name of the variable. If there are multiple of one of those parameters, then they're separated by comma. And method headers, the header itself, you know, the, the, that first line is never terminated by a semicolon. Okay, and then method name should be in camel case. So in this case, it's display message with an M, the hump that's in the middle, cool. And then you say, well, how do you call a, a method? Well, you just you just type out the word. So let's just do one real quick. <clears throat> so I'm going to go here and say file, new project, not very uh, imaginative names. I'm going to call this one chapter five. What a surprise. <sighs> All righty. Wait for it to 
come up. Okay, so we already have a method. Here's the method header. Here's the return type. Here's the name of the method. And here are the, the parentheses and then the arguments that fit in there. Cool. So I'm going to go down to here. I'll see the same indentation level that I'm at, right? Okay, I'm inside the class, but I'm not inside main. Okay, this is important. You can't, you can't nest a method inside a method. So I'm outside of that, that main method, and I say uh, public static. I, I promise we're going to come back to that, okay? And this time I'm going to say void. I might as well just use their example. Display message. And then I'm going to put bow legs in there. And then I'm going to write the code, which does what the method is supposed to do, which is it's kind of simple. System.out print l in <clears throat> hello from my method okay all right so that's that part so how do you make it happen how, so i so line 23 to 26 is when i created the method now i need to use the method the the term is call i call the method like here boy <laughs> no not quite and you just type display message now does it need bow legs <clears throat> yeah like that cool hey let's run this see what happens it's not a very not a very uh, interesting application so it should work pretty decent <clears throat> and it says hello from my method okay so all we did <clears throat> was instead of typing this line 26 inside main I decided to break it out and have it appear someplace else. We'll go a little bit more into the philosophy on why we're doing this <clears throat> after you kind of get the idea of what we're doing. Okay. So calling a method on page 272. So it's, it's just a method name, the parentheses, and if it had arguments, that's where we put them. So it's like any other statement, when you call it, you have to have a semicolon. So that's no big deal. I mean, again, we've been doing this, right? I mean, this is a method call. We've been doing that since the first day. Well, this is a method call, so it's going to be about the same. <clears throat> okay. Um, so when you call it, for example, I didn't have to say void or anything like that, right? In other words, when I'm using it, I don't have to include things like public or static or void, or if I had parameters, I wouldn't have to, to give the data types for those guys. Okay, kind of makes sense. All right. So can I, a method call another method? Well, sure, right? That's no big deal. Let's just go down to here. Let's create another method. Public static void display another method. And this one's going to say system print line hello from another method. Okay, now I could put this guy here. That would work, right? Or I could put him inside here. So I would say display and uh, oh, helps you spell right. So that's like. It's like nesting, right? I've nested one method inside another method. So again, this this not much to see here. You know, it, yeah, of course I can have these things stacked up. It's okay. I mean, I could call it from inside here. <clears throat> I could put it right here if I wanted to, or I could have it inside another one. So yes, methods can call methods. I mean, <clears throat> this is the method, and we called a method. This is the method. And we called a method. And so this so, is like, right? See, there's, there's nothing new here. Okay. So when it comes time to passing an argument, that's a little differently. So I'm going to create me a third one. And this is public static void display given message. 
Okay, now this time I'm going to tell it that we're going to receive arguments. And so I have to give it the data type just as if we were coming up with declaring a variable. So the rules are the same, right? If, if I was declaring a variable, right, I would say, um, you know, string because that's the data type and then the message the variable name and the message and the variable names are going to be camel case you know you remember all this stuff don't you so this time i'm going to say system out print l in <clears throat> and then i'm going to say um message because what i'm doing is i'm passing a message to this thing passing a string to this method and then the method is going to turn right around and use that so let's go back up all the way up to the top and let's see if we can do it without providing <clears throat> any arguments so that way is display uh, given message. Okay. So I got a red squiggly. It says cannot be applied to a given type string. <coughs> Found no arguments. The actual and formal argument list different. So I absolutely have to put something in here. But do I put string space? No, just put in the string you want. In other words, when you're calling a method, you don't have to say, you know, static public void. I don't have to say string. I don't have to do any of that. That's all in the header. So here I'm just going to put hello from my uh, I don't know, given method. That's not very <clears throat> good English, but that's beside the point. So let's run this one more time. And ta-da, it works. Okay, so this one, I didn't pass anything to it. You can tell because it just has bow legs. This one, I didn't pass anything to it because it has bow legs. This one, I did pass something to it because it has two things in there. It's got a data type and then the name of a variable. And so I can use that variable scope is just the same as if I typed it right here. Okay, in other words, it's just a scope. I mean, normally when we say scope is defined within the curly braces, uh, yeah, okay, I did say that. But method header or inside the curly braces because this is actually... In, in reality, this is actually part of that curly brace, if, if you'll pardon me. So this has the scope of just this. In other words, I can't go here and say, uh, so what's the, I can't go here and say, um, system.out.println, you know, message. Dang it. <clears throat> that's not going to work because that's, that's the scope of this only is between line 37 and 40, and that's it. So that ain't going to work. Okay. Is this kind of sort of making sense? This is not really all that difficult. And the fact that we've been using it all this time makes it help out a little bit. So when you pass an argument or arguments, it looks like this. So here's one with public static void display value. And then you, in this case, instead of a string, they're doing an integer. That's cool. And then up here, you do display value five, and it passes a five to this guy and then prints out whatever the value is. That kind of sort of makes sense. So this is, again, this is, <clears throat> this is probably not a tough concept. So let's talk about data types. And remember we talked about how... Um, there's a thing called implicit conversion, where you have a, uh, you know, a small box, small cardboard box can fit into a large cardboard box without any trouble. But if I type, take a big cardboard box and put it in a small cardboard box, I got to tell it to do something, or you know, take a hacksaw and cut off a chunk of the box, right? Remember all that? Well, the same thing applies here. But uh, we're coming up on the 15-minute mark, so you guys know how this works. <clears throat> 